Welcome to a short Q&A on big data and analytics and controlling and finance. My name is Walid Mehana, Principal at Harvard and Partners. Today with me is Thomas Davenport, Professor Thomas Davenport from the Babson College, MIT, and the International Institute for Analytics. Needless to say, Tom Davenport is one of the most prolific researchers and advocates for big data and analytics. He has written four books on the topic and um, is a regular contributor to the Harvard Business Review. Tom, great to have you here. Thank you for your time. Happy to be here. Thanks, Walid. Thank you. Everybody's highly interested in big data and analytics. And on the other hand, there's also some caution and skepticism. What is your experience, your perception of the current status quo of the adaption of big data and analytics in finance and controlling? Well, you know, I sometimes classify different industries and functions as overachievers and underachievers. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sorry to say that uh, finance and control has been in the underachiever category. They have had a lot of small data for many years from transaction systems and so on, but have, have for the most part only done reporting on it. I mean, they're obviously very good in many cases at doing reporting, but at doing more predictive analytics or prescriptive analytics, um, not that much in the kind of performance management arena and not really taking the leadership inside their organizations for doing more analytics. So I think there's a great opportunity for those functions to, to play a leading role and to use analytics in many other areas, but I'm afraid it hasn't happened for some reason in the, in the past very often. Not yet. Will the controller of the future need to be a part-time or even a full-time data scientist? I think not a formal data scientist, but certainly um, learning something about the statistical and computational methods that data scientists use would not, not be a bad idea. Um, the computational ones are you know, how do you deal with large, really large data sets and split those up across parallel computer systems? You don't need to learn Hadoop or Pig or Hive or Python or any of these open source tools that many people in data science use, but having some general sense of what goes on would be useful. And in, in analytical methods, I think some sense of how a regression equation works certainly uh, would be helpful to almost anyone, but certainly to uh, uh, controller who wants to play a leadership role in the analytics and big data space. Okay, that brings us to our next question. So is this something the current controlling um, team needs to build up as a separate skill or is it also a new profile for controllers in general, new people that need to be hired? Well, unfortunately, I don't think that universities have thus far done a great job of getting these kinds of skills inculcated in people who come out with accounting degrees and so on. Um, it's in some ways even worse in the tax area. I recently did a little project on tax analytics and many of those people are lawyers and they learn nothing about analytics or computing in their in their legal training on tax. So um, I think a lot of university programs need to add some of these um, orientations and skills. And fortunately, there are more and more ways that you can get them outside of the formal university context. There are online programs uh, uh, in, from many universities and, and other providers that can give you the skills that you would need to make good decisions in these areas without having to go back to school. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will make sure to talk to the universities in Germany at good least idea. for the topics. So to sum it up, what is your recommendation to the CFO? Start building digital analytical capabilities or wait until the skill set is broadly established in other functions of the company? Well, I think it, it obviously depends a little bit on the context. If you see nobody else taking overall leadership of the area, then it would certainly make sense for a CFO to step up and say, this needs coordination, it needs collaboration among the different, different groups that are doing analytical work. Um, if you have a sense that there's already a group in a, at an enterprise level who's coordinating analytics, you don't need to necessarily take over that role, but I think working closely with them and thinking about how do we inject more of an analytical orientation into uh, finance activities would be a, a very good thing to do. So, you know, 
Um, in some cases, you want to lead. In other cases, you just want to just play a, a very active, participating role. But either way, the time is now. To do something more aggressive, absolutely. Okay. What are the main fields for more analytical finance based on big data? Well, I, I talked about um, five today, and I think you could probably talk a, about a good uh, many more, but um, probably the single most important one, I would say, is to get much more analytical about performance management, mm -hmm. um, to not just report on performance management, but to predict it, to understand the underlying drivers of it. Um, you know, uh, we've had a lot of organizations adopt balanced scorecards, which is a good idea. Yes. It's, you know, it's great to get some non-financial performance measures. It's good to center in on a few um, KPIs that really matter. But the original idea behind the balanced scorecard is that eventually you would test these items to see, you know, do the non-financial ones actually predict, in a statistical sense, the financial ones. So that's one important area that, you know, if you've been doing a balanced scorecard for a few years, you probably have enough data to start doing some you know, statistical analysis on it. I also talked about using analytics um, more, more aggressively in cost management, in uh, the um, whole area of, um, for example, doing testing about different types of spending levels and different types of capital investments to see which really pay off. Risk management, of course, um, if you're an investment banker, you may be quite analytical about um, risk related issues, but we can do that in a whole variety of other companies uh, and functions as well with regard to, I don't know, supply risk and various types of environmental risk. Mm -hmm. um, we, need to, we need to get much more analytical about that. And then, you know, I argued that the final area that I talked about was just taking overall leadership for analytics, particularly if no one else is doing it within your, within your company. The last point is very interesting because taking overall leadership also does mean some kind of governance that has to be taken or given in one of the other kind. Yeah, I think there is certainly a governance activity and also a kind of formation of, of, a, of an analytical group or if groups already exist, trying to provide some sort of umbrella of mm. coordination and collaboration among the different groups. In, uh, finance and control are typically enterprise service functions, and so it makes sense for them to orchestrate this activity that would then provide services to marketing or human resources or supply chain or, or what have you. Mm -hmm. But So I think it's an opportunity that, that um, has thus far been largely missed, but let's be optimistic. <laughs> We do so. Really looking forward to it. Tom, it has been A pleasure and thank you very much for the valuable insights. I'm quite sure that they will resonate in the German finance controlling community and I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.